Okay, we're here at the Bonaventure Cemetery uh, that's in uh, outside of Savannah, Georgia, about three or four miles. And you can see the huge oak trees out here. But the uh, Bonaventure Cemetery is a famous cemetery here in uh, Saint or Savannah, Georgia, right outside of Savannah, Georgia. And uh, basically, um, a lot of people come here. You'll see a lot of people walking around. Uh, it's 100 acres, and it's completely full. And it looks like they just started filling up another cemetery on back about a mile. You can see here, National Register of Historic Places. And the actual name of the cemetery here so let's just take a quick walk around but when I say quick uh, this is a big cemetery so it might take a while I didn't think they even had cemeteries this big, to be honest with you. I guess there are, but 100 acres, that's a big cemetery. So let's kind of stroll through here and see what we can see. Cemetery is open from 8 to 5, so it does close up. Um, probably to keep, uh, of course, people out of here. Now, I was at the uh, Colonial. Um, graveyard there in Savannah which is the oldest and um, it closes up at 8 o'clock and they had issues in the colonial uh, people going there at night and uh, destroying things I guess that's the Clinton plot So that, I mean, there is some newer though in here, 2011. I guess that's the Hart family plot. But this, uh, this, this is known for being very picturesque. And here, of course, the oak trees with the, the uh, moss growing in the trees, Spanish moss. Doyle family plot. Morgan. And those. Huh. Wilkinson. So it looks like they, I don't know, they may continue to still bury people here, I guess. I thought it was full, but. Maybe they're still burying. I they do see some in 2000, so maybe they're still burying uh, uh, families in these plots, family plots. But I'm sure it's mostly full. Up there at the house, there was a a uh, like a computer, like you could punch in like the people's names and find out where they were buried at. So. Um, plot locator huh. huh this was originally used in the Church of Scotland built in the late 1600s on the south side of Glasgow Scotland the church was torn down in 1995 and the stone shipped to America in 1997 expressly for the construction of the Scottish charn hmm Interesting. Hmm. 
Mustin. That's kind of an unusual last name. Steinberg over there. Who that is? Okay, this must be the smart family plot. And he built that big, he put that big pendulum in there. They must have been wealthy. They had something like that back then. Those are the 1800s, 1900s. Huh. I actually wanted to do this uh, live on YouTube, but was looking at my uh, cell service, and out here it just doesn't have much cell service. I know it would just constantly kick off. Last night when I was at the other cemetery, the uh, Colonial there in town, I had four bars, and I was on uh, Face or uh, YouTube Live, and it constantly kept uh, kicking off for whatever reason. So it probably is better off just to record and then upload it. That way it won't keep kicking you off. If somebody's got a mausoleum, I can see I could see uh lead glass in it. Huh. Look here. Huh, Schroeder. Schroeder. I don't know who this dude was, but he must have, him or her must have had. Okay, looks like there was like several of the family. Several buried on the inside there. And the walls. Man, look at that art. That lead glass. Man, I bet that cost some money. Pretty. Huh. You got that, uh, sub with that solid brass. Could be copper, but more likely solid brass. Oh. Oh, yeah, there's another one over here. People who had money to make burial sites like this had to have a lot of money back then. <clears throat> Not cheap to dig back then it would have been just as expensive. So, okay, so I see some more glass. You can't really see it because it's so bright. Let's go on the back side here. We can. Okay. okay, you can see the lead glass from here. A cross and a crown. Huh. And it's brass. You can see that they used to have a cover over top of it. So either broke it down or it fell down one. Water from out here. I guess if they want to water the lawns out here, but that's pretty neat. It's all made. It looks like it's all made out of marble. John Henry Franken. Yeah, it's marble. Okay. 
statues over there. Now you can't take tours over here. They offer like bus rides over here. They have like two hour tour tours, that kind of thing. I figured I might take a tour, but kind of want to walk around on my own leisure here and get some uh, good video. It's like another like a little mausoleum there. Some type of leg glass in there too on the back side, but it's kind of hard to tell what it is. Huh. There's another one that says Schroeder here. Yeah, that's blocked off from the inside. There's no window. Looks like most of the people in here that I've seen so far was built in the, uh, or buried here starting in the eight, 1880s, things like that, until the early 1900s. Um, that's what I'm seeing. Of course, I'm sure there's different sections that could be older. 
That's 1889. Salmon Cleason. Okay, so that's 1876. He buried. And these people had some really nice tombstones. You can see we still haven't got to the back of this yet. Um, I've been pretty much walking straight back for several minutes now, and we still haven't gotten to the end of it. So there's definitely some very creative looking tombstones. Um, definitely some different styles I've never, I've never seen before. Hmm. Made it to where one time you could, I guess that was a flower, probably play out flower beds on the other side of it you could plant. Now that, that was a, uh, that's actually mausoleum there that they have in the old colonial. Um, Oak Colonial Cemetery and the guide was telling us last night that how these are built is that they basically closed them all but how they were made where they had like stairways going down and they're I mean those ones in town was probably built the same way they were like 15 feet deep and they had it set up I think like on either way I understood it, on either side they have like you could bury like um, it was almost like bump beds, you know, and it was like three on each side to where you could you know bury like up to six uh, people um, in those type of uh, mausoleums. Now those mausoleums over there, I was looking in there, you couldn't see, but I could see they were the same way. They had like three on each side where you could bury like a family of six or whatever in there, and. Uh, Yeah, you can see here, that's what it's going to be. Because we got six different names on here. And they're the, all the same family. Here we go. So there is six people buried in there, like I say. So what, how they would do it. Now you can't no longer see it, but he, he was saying that there would be like a, a stairway going down. They probably filled it in so nobody could get to it. But there would be a stairway going down. And you could go in there. Then on either side of this would be there would be three and three on either side and that's where they would bury them inside of here and he said that the colonial cemetery i went to last night it was like 15 feet deep and what the union soldiers did because when they took savannah um when they took savannah they were there for like 45 days or so resting up and he was he was telling us that uh they used that cemetery, the Colonial Cemetery there in town, to, um, they used it for a shelter. They took and went in those, and they uh, used it for a shelter. They took and uh, went down there and, and stayed in it. If there's any bones in the way, they just took them out and threw them out. But they basically used it, that uh, Colonial Cemetery, which was about seven acres at the time. Um, they used that to... Um, for troops to stay and sleep in. So, because they were, <clears throat> when the Confederates left the town of Savannah, um, that, I mean, there were still like 20,000 people there in town. 
So they had a place that they had had a place to put their horses and sleep. So they just used the cemetery. Thomason, Charles Thomason. It's a big oak tree there. So I've been filming about 20 minutes now, and I haven't gotten to the very back of it yet. Oh. Uh, Red craft. It's kind of an unusual name in a way. I've heard of hay craft. I don't think I've ever heard my name thread craft. What's W. Wiley? Well, if you look straight out through there, you can see where it ends out there. And it's getting close to that water, I think it's a river or something out there. No mausoleum, but I didn't got windows in that one. Huger. Just not. Hmm. It goes down to the water there. Yes. Wilcox. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that, uh... But that's a little baby right there. Infant. Yeah. Died right before. Okay, uh, lived from April 3rd, 13th, 18, 1907 till December 23rd, 1907. Baby died right before Christmas. Hmm. Huh. Well, that'd be horrible. So I see this person was just buried here in 2015. So I'm assuming the only people who probably can be buried here now has already purchased plots, probably their family, family plot. They can be buried in here. That's probably the only ones. So I'm sure there's not too much left here to bury. So now that was an interesting looking. How they had that set up. So he put some detail into that. Uh, cool. I, I like the, uh, I like all the different architecture. And you can see the, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, eyes, okay. First I thought that was a J, it says eyes. Most people are theists. All oh, that's marble. Dider. John Wheaton. Confederate Drive. Hmm. I know they said I've heard that they had some, um, they, um, had uh, some Confederate soldiers that had been buried in here. On a venture way. So I think this uh, road goes about a mile, about a mile in here before it ends the river. Byerson.
Hmm. Uh, our urn up there. See the brass or copper. Huh. A hardy wily. Huh. Gerardo. Saxton. Little. I haven't seen my family name in here yet. Would not be surprised if there's not one in here. Butler. Got woods. Acorn. Hitch. Throwsdale. 